Hi, everyone. Welcome back to week six of our AAPC CIC curriculum. We're going to go over chapter three, diseases of the blood immune mechanism, and that is code range D50 to D89. There are no chapter specific coding guidelines in this chapter, which is wonderful. So no new coding guidelines to learn. There is an excludes two note that precludes the codes from this chapter to indicate that the certain disease process or illness from the other chapters can be coded if the condition does exist. So what we're really going to do is just go through a couple of the diseases that we see in this chapter, and then we're just going to practice on a few different of the codes. So first, let's look at anemia. Anemia is a condition that develops when your blood lacks enough healthy red blood cells. These cells are the main transporters of oxygen to the organs. If red blood cells are also deficient in hemoglobin, then your body isn't getting enough oxygen. Symptoms of anemia like fatigue can occur because organs aren't getting enough of what they need to function properly. So nutritional anemias refer to those types of anemias that can be directly attributed to nutritional disorders. And the nutritional anemias are coded in the range of D50 through D53. Now, hemolytic anemia is a condition in which there are not enough red blood cells in the blood due to the premature destruction of the red blood cells, and these are coded to the range of D55 through D59. So sickle cell disorders, you've heard of sickle cell anemia. These are located under category D57 and are broken down by the type and whether crisis is present. Code block D60 to D64 contains codes for aplastic and other anemias, including anemia and chronic diseases classified elsewhere, and secondary anemias. Okay, so let's look at an example here. So we have Jennifer who was treated for stage four chronic kidney disease when she developed erythropoietin resistant anemia. So in this case, we need two codes. We need the anemia in chronic kidney disease, and we also need a code for the chronic kidney disease chronic kidney disease stage four. Now, at the D63.1 in the tabular, we're going to see a code first note associated with this code, and it says code first associated underlying chronic kidney disease. So as with any of the codes in the tabular, we always wanna check our instructional notes to look for any code first notes or use an additional code notes that would instruct us on our sequencing priority. Okay, and so moving on to neutropenia. Uh, neutropenia is an abnormally low count of neutrophils, which are white blood cells that help your immune system fight off infections, particularly of bacteria and fungi. You have several types of white blood cells and between 45 and 70% of all white blood cells are neutrophils. So what I'd like for you to do is go through and for all of these diagnoses, I would like you to look up the code in the alphabetic index and then confirm in the tabular. Now, you only have to do for chapter three. So for number two and number three, where we have CKD and also a malignant neoplasm, you don't have to code that code as well. So I just want you to code the code for the anemia, um, the correct code for the anemia based on the fact that they are, it's either due to the CKD or due to the malignant neoplasm. So you can pause the recording now and then we'll walk through them together. So our first one, it's anemia and our main term. So all we have to do is simply go to our alphabetic index. Okay, and here we are at anemia. And that is the only term that we have. That's all the information in the documentation that we have. So again, looking here, we have anemia and we have some non-essential modifiers, meaning that if any of these code, any of these terms are used with the anemia, then it's not going to impact code assignment. We still have our default code for anemia, and that is going to be D64.9 because we don't have any other documentation to use any of the subterms below. So again, main term anemia without any further specification is going to be D64.9. And then let's go to our tabular and see what we get. Okay, so here we are at D64.9 is where the alphabetic index led us, and we have anemia unspecified, which is exactly uh, our documentation because we don't have anything further. Now, I do always like to go with any code that I look up in the tabular, I do like to go back at least to the category level and see if there are any instructional notes. And we do have an instructional note here that says excludes one. So this is anything in category D64. We have excludes one refractory anemia, which is category D46. Okay, so as we just saw in our book, D64.9 is the correct code for anemia not otherwise specified. 
Okay, so let's move on to something a little bit more complex, which is anemia due to CKD. Let's go to our alphabetic index and look up the code together. Okay, so here we are with our main term, anemia, and the documentation says it's due to CKD. And remember, the term in or with is an automatic connection according to our convention for the with or in. So if we have a patient who has anemia and they have chronic kidney disease, this in right here in our index signifies the fact that they're automatically connected unless there's provider documentation that would unlink them. Okay, so we can automatically link them here. So we have this in, and then we have chronic kidney disease, and that leads us to D63.1. Okay, so let's go to D63.1 in our tabular and look at any interesting notes here. So here we are in D63.1, which is anemia in chronic kidney disease. And that is the code that we got from the alphabetic index. So that would be correct. And remember, we always want to go up to the category level at least and look at any other notes that we have here. So we want to scroll down. We don't have any notes at the category level. So let's scroll down to our subcategory. And we see here we have anemia and chronic kidney disease again. And we here we have a very important code first note. And it says code first underlying chronic kidney disease, N18 dash. So that means if the patient came in with anemia and chronic kidney disease, we use this combination code D63.1 for our anemia. We would also be coding our chronic kidney disease code, which falls into the N18 category, and that chronic kidney disease code would be coded first. Again, if it met the definition of principal diagnosis, mind you, okay? So that is going to go before our anemia code, okay? That's what that code first means, and it's a mandatory sequencing rule. So code first, remember, carries a definitive sequencing rule with it. Okay, so for anemia due to chronic kidney disease, we have a D63.1, as we just saw in our alphabetic index and tabular and the instructional note we saw with it. So let's do another one together, anemia due to malignant neoplasm. Let's go to our alphabetic index again. And we're actually at the very same spot. So again, main term anemia in. Now again, the documentation says due to, and if we go to the index, let's see. So this is a good example of how we need to really scour the alphabetic index to be able to get to our correct code because our documentation says anemia due to malignant neoplasm. And if we were just to stop here, so we have due to, in, or with, okay? And if we scroll down, there is no entry here for either neoplastic disease or malignant neoplasm. We see our chronic kidney disease here that we just looked up, but we don't see malignant neoplasm, okay? So we have to keep going through our index to see if we can find the specific diagnosis that we're looking for, okay? And if we go back over to in, and remember, due to or with or in, we see here neoplastic disease, okay? See also neoplasm. So that would be D63.0. So that is going to be our starting point to go to the tabular. So we have chronic kidney disease in or due to a malignant neoplasm. So let's go to D63.0 in our tabular and look at that code. So we're exactly back where we were because here's our chronic kidney disease, and this is anemia and chronic diseases classified elsewhere. And we see we have anemia in neoplastic disease, and we have D63.0. And anytime we come to the tabular, we wanna read any, see any of the guidelines or our code first note. So here we have a code first, the neoplasm, which would be categorized to C00 to D49. So again, we have that code first rule. And this would be our correct code for anemia that would be due to a malignant neoplasm. And we would need to use this instructional note for any sequencing rules. So as we just saw in our book, the correct answer is D63.0. So next we have congenital thrombocytopenia and the correct code for that is D69.42. And then we have chemotherapy induced pancytopenia and we're gonna look that one up together. So here we are at pancytopenia, and we want to scroll down, and we see we have an entry for antineoplastic chemotherapy induced, and that's D61.810. 
So let's go there, D61.810. So here we are, D61.810, antineoplastic chemotherapy induced pancytopenia. And again, I like to go up to the category level and see what notes are there because there, that's a place where we can see a lot of notes. But at the category level, we really only have an excludes two note, which would be neutropenia, D70. But we do have some notes at our D61.81 subcategory here, which it says excludes one note. So you always want to make a note of that. Okay. Well, that brings us to the end of our Chapter 3, Diseases of the Blood and Immune Mechanism, Categories D50 through D89. And in our next video, we are going to go through the endocrine system, which will be very exciting. Lots to unpack there.